Jacksonville. The child was born who couldn't sit still. 86 years later with no regret. You know that man can't sit still yet. The Great Depression couldn't get him down. He worked for his dad's store in town. Collecting money in small amounts. For more whites and blacks in the furniture accounts. Steps in Kennedy Wants us all to be free Steps in Kennedy Wants us all to be free As he'd collect, he'd talk to folks Legends, tales, songs, and jokes. Now this fine treasure he recorded right. He was colorblind, didn't see black and white. Writer's project for the WPA. Zora Neale Hurston, he earned his pay. The crackers and blacks, they talked for hours. The week that was on the 28th of October 2017, Halloween, basically speaking, uh, and happy Halloween to everyone out there in uh, Radio Land from WBRN Radio in Boston and on the uh, Boston Red Network. We roll uh, merrily along here, uh, supposedly. Anyway, we have some information coming out of Washington uh, from the Reuters News Agency, first uh, brought out by uh, CNN. I'll just read it very briefly here. First charges filed in special uh, counsel Russian investigation, according to a source here. This is by Mark um, Hassenbale. Anyway. A federal grand jury on Friday approved the first charges in the investigation into alleged Russian meddling in the 2016 presidential election, a source briefed on the matter told Reuters. The incident was uh, was sealed on the orders from a federal judge, so it's not clear what charges were or what the target was, the source said, adding that uh, it could be unsealed as early as Monday. The filing of charges by the grand jury in Washington was the first report was first reported by uh, CNN, uh, which said the target it could be taken into custody as soon as Monday. And that's usually the way these things operate. Intelligence agencies concluded in January that the uh, that Russia interfered in the election to uh, try to help uh, D.J. Trump defeat the Democratic candidate Hillary uh, Clinton through a campaign of hacking, uh, releasing embarrassing emails, disseminating propaganda via social media to discredit her. The special counsel, uh, Robert Mueller, a former director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, is is investigating whether the campaign officials from uh, the uh, Trump operation colluded with uh, those Russian efforts. If the special uh, counsel uh, finds it unnecessary and appropriate, the special counsel is is authorized to prosecute uh, federal crimes arising from the investigation of these matters. That is uh, from the Deputy Attorney General uh, Rosenstein, and he said that on the 17th of April. Sources familiar with Mueller's investigation said he has uh, used uh, that broad authority to investigate links to, between uh, Trump aides and foreign governments as well as possible money, money laundering, tax evasion, and other federal crimes. The Kremlin has denied any uh, allegations, uh, and Mueller's investigation also includes an effort to determine whether Trump or any of his aides tried uh, to obstruct uh, justice. The special counsel team has conducted interviews with uh, former uh, White House Chief of Staff Regis uh, Philbus, uh, former uh, spokesman uh, Sean uh, Spicer, and current and former officials of the White House. 
Federal agents raided the uh, home of uh, the former campaign manager Medford, whose financial and real estate dealings and prior work of a pro-Russian political party in uh, the Ukraine were also being investigated. Mueller was appointed to lead. We won't mess with that. The uh, Russian investigation has cast a shadow over uh, Trump's nine-year-old uh, presidency. Nine muffles, excuse me. Um, Mueller's uh, team uh, has investigated uh, Michael Flynn. He was uh, would have been the security advisor, or he was the national uh, security advisor to D.J. Trump. Flynn was fired from that post in February after misleading uh, the vice president, uh, Pence. While uh, Trump, uh, while he was on uh, Trump's campaign staff, Flynn had a six hundred thousand dollar contract with a Turkish business type. The former uh, CIA director James Woosley, who was an advisor to uh, Trump's campaign, alleged that uh, Flynn uh, discussed with uh, with the businessman and two Turkish ministers the idea of uh, con- conversely uh, splitting. Uh, Gillen out of the uh, U.S. Uh, to face charges in uh, Turkey. Oh, this is a cleric that they've talked about uh, there. This is a very interesting uh, character. He was a Democrat, but a conservative. Jonathan Franks, the spokesman for Woosley, said that Woosley and his wife had uh, been in communication with the FBI and Mueller's team about the claim. His uh, wife, uh, Nancy Miller, uh, has um, responded to every request, whether from the FBI and most recently from the Office of Special Prosecutor. Flynn had previously denied uh, through a spokesman that uh, such a plan was ever discussed. Reuters reported that Woosley and his wife last year uh, pitched. Now, see, this is where all this is overlapping a $10 million project to the same uh, Turkish businessman. Who uh, had an agreement? Uh, who had agreed uh, a smaller contract with Phil, uh, Flynn? Excuse me, and he, he they did not uh, win the contract. So again, this is who said what about what bidding uh, for a uh, for a, a lo- bidding for a lobbying uh, consulting contract with a foreign government are is uh, not illegal. No, and they do it all the time. And came on the scrutiny because he. Uh, he waited until March to retroactively register with the Department of Justice as a foreign agent. One of the things that you are uh, required uh, to do, and he had not done it up until that uh, date uh, forward. In uh, Catalonia, uh, in Madrid actually, they are sacking the government in Catalonia. We'll have a special report on it uh, out of uh, Catalonia as... Uh, this uh, weekend, uh, sometime uh, today, we'll get that out. Uh, the headline in the BBC is uh, Catalonian Independence. Uh, Spain takes charge of the uh, Catalonian uh, government here. The uh, measure on... Uh, <laughs> Samara uh, sent uh, Santa Maria. Anyway, they have it now. <coughs> Early uh, Catalonia's uh, most senior uh, police official that had been stripped of uh, their powers on Friday. The uh, Prime Minister Rajo announced uh, the uh, dissolution, uh, disillusion of the uh, regional uh, parliament and the removal of the uh, Catalonian leader and uh, called snap local elections, which will not solve anything. 
more expected on uh, Saturday with a rally for unity of uh, Spain and the Constitution to be held in Madrid. Now, these are uh, different things. The Catalonian government uh, says they, uh, that of the uh, 43% of potential voters who took part, uh, 90% were in favor of uh, independence. So this will be an ongoing uh, situation here in uh, Catalonia, and we will uh, fully report on it uh, uh, later here um, and where the uh, Spanish uh, Prime Minister is in this uh, scenario. Let's go now uh, to the uh, Washington Post. And the Washington Post is a little behind here. The story has uh, come out, incidentally, that uh, the Republican Free Beacon, that's a newspaper, a right-wing newspaper, had also hired this uh, group, research group, Fusion uh, GPS. Now, this is the same group that uh, the Democratic uh, Central Committee uh, hired and the uh, Clinton uh, uh, campaign. So we got a number of things uh, going here. Uh, the people that hired, they did the uh, research on uh, DJ Trump, uh, primarily links there. Uh, they had hired the research firm to start probing uh, DJ Trump's uh, background. The Free Beacon said it uh, maintained uh, this Fusion GPS organization. A guy named Paul Singer. Uh, two people for me. Uh, uh, with the, uh, he's a billionaire donor behind it. One of the things you'll notice there's a pattern here of these uh, billionaire donors, uh, whether it be. Uh, the, uh, let's see, what's the other being there doing? Ah, there's so many of them out there. Whether it's the Koch brothers or whomever it is uh, that are behind uh, many of these uh, situations. This uh, singer is also, Elliot Management did not respond. Now, the Free Beacon said the research ended uh, before now. the uh, They hired the uh, British intelligence officer there, uh, Christopher Steele, to produce a series of reports to uh, links between uh, the Russians and uh, uh, those close to uh, D.J. Trump. That occurred after the firm was uh, retained uh, by a lawyer for the Clinton campaign and the uh, Democratic National Committee. None of the work produced at the free uh, vacant received appeared in uh, Steele's dossier as a statement from the uh, free beacon, their editor-in-chief, uh, Matthew uh, Continelli. And the chairman, uh, Michael Gofar. Anyway, this uh, is uh, the story of the free, uh, of the, excuse me, of the uh, Fusion GPS uh, stopped paying after uh, stopped paying the research firm offered uh, in, uh, this is April of 2016 to continue researching for Trump for the uh, DNC. So that continued on. The dossier is a collection of reports are compiled. This is by Steele, the uh, former uh, agent, uh, secret agent type there in the UK. Uh, the inner workings of the crime said uh, the Russians had obtained a compromising information about DJ Trump. Include uh, lurid details of his uh, 2013 trip to Moscow for the Miss Universe pageant. You remember he was in the pageant uh, game, beauty pageant game. Uh, the Republicans in the House had been uh, pushing uh, Fusion GPS to identify who paid for the dossier. Uh, last week, uh, and I'm reading from the posts here, Fusion uh, GPS executives uh, invoked their uh, Fifth Amendment rights uh, before the uh, Judiciary Committee. That's uh, Glenn uh, Simpson. Uh, uh, let me see. Not to answer query. Oh, this is by the House Intelligence Committee. Now that he had uh, this Glenn Simpson before the Judiciary Committee, he had spent uh, ten hours there. So, in other words, you have numerous committees uh, within the Congress investigating the same thing. That is really not something that you want to do. You want to go to more or less uh, a setup uh, such as it happened in Watergate, where you have one committee uh, eventually that would. Uh, be composed of everyone uh, concerned, uh, period. And that would uh, bring it about there. I think last night we talked about uh, Mark uh, Hapron. Uh, he used to be the political director at ABC. I think now he's at CNN. He's been 
as they say, put on the shelf uh, potentially here. So there you go. Uh, from the DJ Trump operation, uh, sexual harassment claims are fake news, but they are uh, collaborators. Anyway. Oh, President Obama is uh, welcome to a jury duty. Uh, as Citizen Obama, and this is in the post here, since leaving the White House, uh, his, uh, his next stop, uh, this is in Cook County. Uh, it's interesting, I didn't know he still had his legal residence in Cook County when he was living in D.C., but it doesn't matter anyway. Uh, Constitutional scholar who is frequently uh, involved in messages of civil engagement plans uh, to uh, serve uh, next month, uh, the... Uh, County's chief judge uh, told the, the uh, Chicago Tribune he owns a house in D.C. as well as in <clears throat> as in uh, Chicago. He's followed in the footsteps of G.W. Bush and Bill Clinton, who uh, of whom appeared for jury selection after leaving the White House. Of course, they were never placed on the jury. The chief judge there, who is the uh, Timothy Evans, uh, first has shared the news. With uh, county commissioners doing county commissioners doing a budget hearing there in uh, Chicago, Tribune reported that other uh, high-profile people like Oprah Winfrey also reported uh, for jury duty there in uh, Cook County. He skipped it once in uh, this is uh, Barack Obama in uh, 2010. He was pre-booked the State of the Union. Well. Very unusual to call a president, a setting of president of there. Uh, G.W. Bush summons reported to the George Allen uh, Dallas uh, County a civil building. Uh, he sat through the uh, jury selection of panel, though not picked to serve on the jury. Spent three hours at the court, uh, posed for pitches with fellow candidates. So it was a pretty good uh, situation. In 2003, old Bill Clinton was... Or was he in Manhattan reported that Clinton, whose name was uh, avoided in the court hearings, was uh, eventually dismissed. Joe Biden was called in Delaware in 2011. Well, you know how that went. And in uh, April of 2015, uh, the Chief Justice uh, Roberts reported uh, in what Montgomery County, Maryland, was considered for civil trial involving a car wreck. Roberts answered questions about relatives that his sister was a nurse. His brother-in-law was uh, with the Indiana State Police, but said nothing about his day job, which uh, would be listed on the form. Roberts was not selected. He left without a comment. So you would expect that to happen. He <laughs> usually want the chief justice on uh, the uh, the panel, I mean, that's just, you know, obviously one of the things you don't want to do. I was looking at the uh, Chicago Tribune thing here, a smiling picture of President Obama. Uh, and we'll put this on the Facebook uh, page. And it's basically a rehatch of what is, uh, obviously, we will make certain that he uh, has all the uh, coolaments uh, that a company of former President Evan said his safety will be uppermost in our mind. Don't worry, the Secret Service will be there. Uh, it made it uh, crystal clear to me through his representative that he would carry out his uh, public duty. So this just goes on to mention other people have been in the jurors call for civil or criminal pools, which are used to select jurors for uh, trial. They can be called to any uh, of the county's uh, city or uh, suburban uh, courthouse. All jurors uh, watch a decade-old uh, uh, film narrated by a mustache, Lester Holt, once a local a news anchor. Anyway, remember old Lester Holt, uh, seeing him uh, when he was uh, a news anchor. And so it kind of goes, let's look at the polling uh, quickly here. Uh, we don't want to forget Uncle Carl Rowe. He usually is in here too. In our little roundup, as they say, we'll get to Uncle Carl. Now, this is on Friday the polling company, this race is very, very tight in uh, Virginia. We had from the Hampton uh, University, had uh, uh, this uh, character, Gillespie, uh, who was actually out of New Jersey, up uh, by eight points. 
He's up by two in the polling company. That's, I guess, a GOP company. The uh, the Christopher Newport uh, University uh, has a Northam up by uh, seven points over Gillespie. And Nevada's Republican primary, Tartanian is ahead there of Heller, 44 to 38. And a Harvard Harris uh, poll uh, has um, DJ Trump's approval at uh, 42. And a Gallup at 36, so he hasn't done very good there. And uh, let's see, Rasmussen at 33. And let's see who's going. Well, we gave Mason Dixon. That's in the Florida race. Uh, it's tied up between Nelson and uh, Scott there. And this was a Hampton University up by eight uh, points uh, there uh, with Hampton uh, University, uh, historic African American university. And the uh, people interviewed here go a little bit into this. Uh, 304 were interviewed, uh, 41 percent uh, bet uh, went uh, for Ed Gillespie, uh, 245 in the interviews. Uh, 33% for Napin, and don't know or refuse 201. That's 27% high uh, percentage there. A total of uh, 750 uh, people uh, were in the poll uh, out of uh, Hampton, Virginia, is where they are. Uh, 27% were undecided. So I wouldn't put as much there. A lot of undecided uh, people there uh, working to improve the economy and create jobs. Um, Let's see what the question. Please tell us which one of the issues well, would be your top priority for the next governor in uh, Virginia. Uh, 34% went for jobs, 18% for education, gun control only 9% there, health care uh, 23%, uh, so I guess it was second to jobs. Improving a transportation infrastructure such as bridges, etc., uh, only 3% are there. And the next question, uh, do negative campaign ads make you more or less likely to vote for a candidate? That's a question that some of the uh, frequency there, uh, more likely uh, 8%, less likely 58%, no impact at all, 30%. Didn't know, refused, uh, 4% of those, and they actually said 32, so it was 750 there. Uh, more than half, uh, 56% of uh, likely voters uh, disapproved of the job that D.J. Trump is doing. Uh, the question, uh, do you approve or disapprove of D.J. Trump? 39% approved of D.J. Trump. This is in Virginia. 56% disapproved. And a 5% uh, refused or didn't answer the question. Overall, do you approve or disapprove of the job of Terry McCullough? Now, he's the current governor. Approved 52% in this poll. And I disapprove of 38%, 10% didn't know. So that's how the poll went down. And they actually, the, the frequency of answers there, 200 and, uh, 300, excuse me, and 89 uh, approved, uh, 266 disapproved, 75 didn't know. So this is a Hampton uh, University uh, poll here. And very interesting uh, situation going on there. Now we'll uh, flip, incidentally, in the game last night. It would have been Game 3 played in Houston, Texas. The uh, Houston Astros, 5-3 uh, to three over the Dodgers. We'll, uh, go, we'll go to that uh, a little later here. We have a sports uh, package where we'll go to Houston and go to Los Angeles. The uh, Dodgers have got uh, big problems, no doubt about that. Uh, so we'll have to see how that uh, works out Uh in Houston, uh, the uh, Dodgers were favored, uh, but Houston, it, you know, so far uh, their pitching has uh, stifled the Dodgers, and the Dodgers' uh, pitching, uh, Darvish has fallen apart. So here we go again. Uh, we're going to Uncle Carl Robe now. We don't let Uncle be out here. Uh, he's writing in the Wall Street Journal on uh, the... Uh, 26 of October 2017, Democrats uh, impeachment uh, mania, he calls it, 
It's easy to dismiss the impeachment efforts of Democrat Representative Brad Sherman, Al uh, Green, Al Green from Houston, and our own Maxine Waters as actions of inconsequential backbenchers. Sherman argued in July, uh, in his July impeachment resolution, that President D.J. Trump committed obstruction of justice by exercising his uh, constitutional authority as head of the executive branch. The California lawmaker said uh, it seems like uh, that the president has uh, something uh, to hide regarding uh, Russia. Have a, here's an idea. How about waiting uh, for the FBI? And, and anyway, that, that's moving on, Uncle Carl. Then there is uh, <clears throat> Mr. Green, a long-serving member of the House, without any significant inco- uh, accomplishments. Uncle Carl can't uh, wait to trash Mr. Green, incidentally. Mr. Green was also had received press. Fretz, excuse me. He unveiled his uh, competing uh, impeachment resolution early this month, and according to a list of uh, Trump impeachable act- actions, was disrespecting the National Football League uh, players, overturning a national election because of uh, crude uh, comments about uh, athletes who don't stand doing the uh, national anthem. Certainly, is novel. Then uh, there is uh, Ms. Waters. She, she said last week that uh, the New York. Uh, uh, G- uh, Gila, she was attending, uh, was uh, so exciting that with uh, this kind of inspiration, I will go and take out uh, Trump tonight. If you took the pro- prob- <laughs> provocation uh, literally, but uh, even uh, her uh, defense is sound on hinge. He created a controversy, he cannot uh, get along with uh, our members of Congress. I am uh, trying to continue my efforts to impeach him. Apparently, the standard for impeachment of a president has shifted again. Now he uh, can be removed from office for creating controversy and fighting with uh, Congress. Well, it's high crimes and misdemeanors. It's it's undefined. What he does or what he doesn't do is defined by the Congress. It might be uh, tempting uh, to roll your eyes at these uh, malfeasances of uh, of Trump's uh, derangement uh, syndrome, but it will be hard for responsible Democrats to ignore or excuse the party's uh, grandstanders now that the hedge fund billionaire Thomas Slayer has uh, pledged the $10 million. He's out of California to the cause of impeaching the president. The open letter last week, uh, St- Steyer, I suppose how you pronounce his name, called on grassroots Democrats to urge their representatives to remove uh, D.J. Trump from office uh, at once. There is a list of impeachable offenses where Trump's decision to end uh, President Obama's uh, defensive action uh, for childhood arrival program to blocking uh, Obama-era regulation, regulatory initiatives to withdraw from the Paris uh, Climate Accord and to, uh, to uh, seek repeal of Obamacare by asserting a president uh, should be removed from office over power uh, party uh, differences. Steyer uh, has uh, done uh, more than uh, trivialize impeachment. He has uh, moved America closer to tyranny. I'm not sure how he'd do that. Mr. Trump uh, is accused of having brought about uh, still his, uh, uh, this uh, pressure from Democrats to join uh, this Banana Republic-style coup will hurt many of the party's candidates in a close contest, regardless of their answers. I'm reluctant to give advice to Democrats, but the uh, growing impeachment circus uh, will damage their party standing in next year's midterm election. Uncle Carl is hoping for that. He's on his knees, no doubt, looking down. Uh, Many independent voters who support D.J. Trump in uh, 2016 have been uh, turned off by this behavior in office, but applaud his uh, politics, his behavior in office. Democrats promise they will use a congressional uh, majority to impeach the president who uh, will only uh, repulse their uh, these independents. Now, the situation is out there when you have a very, very close election, as you did in 2016, an election that was uh, prosecuted by Hillary DeMosta Clinton in a very incompetent manner, uh, and you still end up with roughly about 80,000 uh, 80, votes in the states that uh, we're talking about here, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and uh, Wisconsin. 
In other words, if those votes would have went, or roughly we'll say 100,000 votes, would have went in a different direction, uh, the monster uh, would have been uh, the president. So, in other words, when you start talking about that, that is about as close as you can get out of millions and millions of votes um, there. So, this is a situation that uh, had the campaign been prosecuted uh, properly uh, by the monster, the monster could have won the election. But looking uh, back at our models, and we used two models, we used it, one was a snap model. Anyway, uh, our standard model, the monster was a never ahead after the convention, after the Republican convention, D.J. Trump uh, got out uh, ahead of the ball game a bit, and he never lost that uh, lead. In the second model there, we saw the monster coming on. Now, we have to play in these controversies, but these were uh, self-made controversies. Why would the monster put a server in her house? It really wasn't a server, but anyway, alluded to it. There was a box in her house, and there was a rack over in Jersey at a uh, uh, a co-location, a co-locator we call them in the, in the trade, in the IT trade. Anyway, nonetheless, the monster had a, a mail server. It looked bad given the monster's record that the monster was trying to hide something. Now, other secretaries of state, including uh, General Powell, uh, had... Email accounts. I think he's an AOL. Even G.W. G. Bush had an AOL account. That is not a server. But they use it to do official uh, business. And, of course, D.J. Trump does his propaganda on uh, Twitter. I don't know what the email accounts he uses, but he's he's voracious at uh, uh, Twittering and texting. Oh, that's right. I forgot about texting with D.J. Trump. Let me finish this up. Democrats uh, cheered when uh, the National Party chair called Trump uh, an existential uh, threat to America and American history, the most dangerous president. Well, there's no doubt about that because of many of the things D.J. Trump has said. Yet these uh, overly rough comments uh, could uh, turn off swing votes, especially if they have Republican choices on the ballot who come across as... Uh, focused on making the nation more prosperous, united, and secure. Well, and part of the problem the Republicans have, and this is the majority of Republicans, they're not about making the nation uh, more uh, prosperous, more secure. Uh, the saber-rattling that they're doing now with the uh, Democratic Republic of Korea uh, and various uh, adventures that Mad Dog Mathis, you imagine having a character named Mad Dog Mathis running around, and then a moron that's a chief of staff there, had right, been in the military 40 years. Uh, Kelly, the Marine Corps, not known for intelligence, uh, f- picked up the ball and literally lost the ball. Pathetic. So you have these kinds of characters. Uh, you're not going anywhere. Let me finish this up here. The Democrats, a criminalization of policy difference and offensive uh, speech has uh, a companion uh, sentiment as a potentially... Uh, hurtful to Democrats and American political culture. Well, the political culture is already thrown into the uh, cesspool of life there. It's in the gutter. It, everyone agrees upon that. We have, incidentally, uh, I think her name is Joanne Kearns. Uh, she was at the Kennedy School, a reporter, and uh, now with the Los Angeles Times. She used to be with the Wall Street Journal. Uh, wrote a paper and was talking about this, and we'll have a one of our modular programs, we call it, on this issue. We have a number of those going on. A sense of insufferable uh, moral superiority encouraged by uh, President Obama, who uh, reemerges on the uh, political stage this week. Anyway, this is Uncle Carl uh, writing in the Wall Street Journal for what it's worth and for what it's not worth. We'll go to sports now. We need to go somewhere. And we'll look at this uh, from uh, all angles, uh, a lot of angles out here to look at, and we'll we'll do it in some kind of manner here and see exactly where uh, we are uh, in, in terms of that. Okay. The L.A. Dodgers are in a hole, no doubt about that. Let's find a sports package here. Now we'll start this out. Uh... From the L.A. Times, uh, I'd like to start out in the L.A. Times, uh, Bill, uh, Pesky, I suppose. Anyway, 
The headline here is Dodgers are suddenly in a Texas-sized hole with uh, Game 3 loss uh, to the Astros. Two days after one of the most devastating losses in the franchise history, the flattened Dodgers stayed down and uh, stared up and watched the Houston Astros continue to uh, continue to uh, swagger, swagger excuse me, their way through uh, this World Series. Just when uh, you thought it couldn't uh, get any worse, it became a Texas-sized hole. The Dodgers uh, falling a Game 2's uh, collapse with a Game 3 meltdown. In a 5-3 to three loss at Minute Maid Park. Imagine Minute Maid Park. Hmm. Remember the team that uh, went 52-9 uh, and nine at one point this summer? Well, these uh, were the guys that went 1-16. Uh, and 16. Remember the team that rode uh, Clayton Kershaw to the series... Uh, oops. The series opening win. The team is now uh, trailing uh, two games to one and must rely on postseason uh, newbie uh, Alex Wood to pull him out of the hole against uh, Charlie Morton. Uh, Houston's Charlie Morton in game three. That'll be later tonight. The Dodgers have uh, le- have uh, lots uh, left in the tank. The series is far from over. We're going to come back. That's Enrique Hernandez, well, I'm not so certain about that, Enrique. Mr. Darvish never really got comfortable, never uh, acted engaged, and frankly, uh, barely even showed up. Well, he, I think he went one in uh, what? We'll find out in a minute here. This was a defensive recording, a, a new uh, statistic that could be called a triple bobble. Those committed one throwing error, one field error, one uh, blown a big pitch. Uh, the offense has collected uh, four hits while botching it badly on the bases. If you play the normal Dodger uh, team, we win that game. That's from Corey Bellinger, who uh, had a hit in the series. It uh, may be one, uh, one of the uh, not great uh, fundamental games that we played from the Astros. The win wasn't all... Uh, that great eye with their victory marred by, oh boy, a racial slur the, uh, delivered by one of their uh, stars. Hmm. After starting the surge against Darvish uh, with a uh, second inning leadoff home run, the Cuban born uh, Guerrero, uh, Guerrero? Uh, nah, I'm mispronouncing it. It's not Guerrero. Sorry about that. Set in the dugout and openly marked uh, the Japanese Darvish, uh, lifting the corner of his eyes and appearing uh, to mouth the uh, Spanish word, which uh, translate to little Chinese boy. Chitaktu. <laughs> uh, Chitaktu. Anyway, he uh, <laughs> later apologized, and Darvish said he wasn't angry, but but it doesn't matter regardless of uh, Guerrilla. Uh, Guerrilla's, uh, mo- Guerrilla's motive on Darvish uh, is understanding he came across as a racially offensive jester and baseball needs to swiftly and strongly punish it. Well, maybe they'll take him out to the woodshed. Uh, he should be suspended immediately. This is... Uh, Guerrero. Uh, early this season, Oakland Matt Joyce was suspended for two games for shouting anti-gay slur at a fan in Anaheim. Toronto's uh, Kevin uh, Pryor was also suspended. Well, if there's any suspension, it won't be now. It'll be next year. Darby said, I, I uh, saw it, but uh, for me, uh, it, it personally didn't bother me. I'm sure the Astros have fans and there are a lot of Asian people all over the world. And to those uh, from a humanistic perspective, as a a baseball organization, I thought uh, the image might suffer as a result. That's the Astros' image there. Rod Medford, he's a baseball commissioner, is scheduled to meet uh, with uh, Guerrilla. Anyway. Meanwhile, the Dodgers have to uh, figure out how to uh, 
stop uh, rolling out their uh, late uh, August mess. Well, and yeah, that happens. They didn't. They staged uh, stayed flat. It started with Darvish, who took to the mound uh, with a two and O and an ERA fantastic ERA of one point five nine. But a day earlier, he had a press conference, which he seemed uncomfortable, uncertain. Well, it's uncertain. He kept going on. He allowed a double from George Springer in his uh, on his fifth pitch of the game, and never stopped reeling. Uh, Collapsing uh, in a flurry of Astro line drives in the uh, third. I, did he make it to the third? Uh, by this time, uh, Darvish was mercifully removed. He uh, allowed uh, four runs. Oh, okay. Yeah. Six hits in less than uh, two full innings. Uh, okay, yeah. While uh, introducing just one uh, swing and miss uh, amongst his uh, 49 pitches there. Uh, the Astros batted uh, 600 against him, point six hundred against him. Darvish will uh, s- be seeking as much as $175 million this winter from free agency. Well, he better have a good showing <laughs> once he does that. Anyway, the offense rebounded after the Astros' uh, early fireworks by loading the bases with uh, three consecutive walks to open the third, but on the third pitch from uh, reeling. Lance McCullough Jr., Corey um, Seager hitting a double play ground. Oh, well. Yaziel Pri. Uh, then later in the inning, Yaziel Pri started, uh, had been uh, standing safe on uh, second base after hitting a live drive into the corner beyond the third base. But uh, he inexplicably stopped running after uh, crossing uh, first, then tried to recovered by sprinting to second, but he was thrown out. So, I mean, it's just a, a comedy of errors here. Yes, he uh, was in, uh was also involved in the Dodgers' run, producing fielding a blunder as his uh, throw to the plate after a throwing error by the pitcher Tony Watson was uh, just off target, allowing Josh Reddick to uh, score from a first, so that was a night on a night that uh, just one of the main uh, miss the Dodgers who needed to have uh, their members erased. Uh, the game two collapse was a long time ago. They were facing a much win. Now they're facing a much in uh, fourth game on Halloween. Not the way you want to go to the Houston paper. Uh, Astros. Uh, down uh, Dodgers and take a 2-1 uh, series lead. Mr. Peacock pitched a brilliant game. We got into that. We were traveling around. Anyway, uh, 50 minutes after uh, the right field, Josh Reddick grounded. Uh, oh, excuse me. Gloved the final out of a victory Friday night. They left the Astros two more shy of a World Series. To their first World Series title, Bill Peacock, uh, was still in disbelief. Peacock had just... Uh, Converted a uh, three and two thirds uh, inning save to a uh, five to three win against the LA Dodgers in Game Three. He did it for uh, Lance McCullough Jr. McCullough did it for uh, Charlie Martin. Martin, excuse me, in Game Seven of the American League Championship uh, Series, he shut it down. They didn't bring their closer, incidentally, Giles in. Um, his save, the first uh, career that. Uh, the first of a career that dates back to 2011 marked the longest uh, relief outing of the World Series since uh, San Francisco star uh, Madison Bumgarner pitched uh, five legendary innings to close out the uh, 2014 uh, Classic. Hmm. But this was Brad Pe- Peacock, an unassuming 29-year-old right-hander, so uncertain of his status with the Astros that he began spring training, he warned his wife they might have to move uh, to Japan. Again, the Dodgers uh, on uh, the biggest stage of baseball offers. Peacock retired 11 of 12. That tells you there what happened. He didn't allow a hit on his way to closing the Astros' first win in the World Series game played in Houston, a win that could... Uh, put them ahead, uh, but put them ahead 2-1. to one. A four-run uh, barrage against uh, 
Mr. Uh, Dobbish stood as the Astros' primary source of offense. They chased Darvish, the ex-Texas Ranger ace, uh, in uh, their uh, big second inning. McCullers, uh, while uh, far from uh, his sharpest, it gave the Astros a solid five and a third innings. A.J. Hinch uh, let a Peacock fly the rest of the game. And and they had their uh, times. The uh, Astros plummeted, plummeted Darvish, who had uh, been uh, dominant in his uh, previous postseason starts against the Arizona D-backs, and uh, the uh, Chicago uh, Cubs. On Friday, he, his uh, pitches looked flat. Of the 49, the Japanese right-hander threw only one Extended a swing and miss. Extracted, excuse me, a swing and a miss. Uh, many more were uh, scarts and fouled off. Darvis lasted uh, one in the third inning. The first in uh, time in uh, 136 starts since he debuted uh, in the majors. And he didn't complete at least three endings. Uh, this was a, this uh, was his uh, first time not registering even one strikeout. He issued uh, one walk, uh, but six hits. Four of it uh, went for extra bases. He just uh, left uh, some balls up on the plate. That's the Astros uh, catch. Astros uh, center fielder uh, George Springer, who left the game with a double. He lives on getting you to chase his stuff, but for us uh, to come out and capitalize on uh, some mistakes. So that was it. Now they have mentioned this guy, uh, Guerrilla, uh, sparked a four-run uh, second ending with a home run into uh, Crawford's boxes that registered an extra velocity of 104.3 miles an hour. Jose uh, uh, Tuve. Cracked a double, 105, 107.5, and even uh, an out by a Springer. Oops. Came off of his bat at 104.9 miles an hour. A sacrifice by Alex uh, Brigman at 103. So these things are flying. Uh, by the time uh, Mr. Darvish was uh, replaced by Kenta Maeda, the uh, Astros had a, a four-zip uh, lead there. The fastball of command just wasn't there. The slider uh, was uh, backing up, is what Robert said. So he really didn't have uh, the feel and couldn't get any type of rhythm going. Yeah, definitely there. So right there, you find yourself after uh, five outs, down a four zip, uh, you go to, uh, you go right there. Uh, anyway, Roberts used uh, five different uh, relievers uh, to get through the night. Kenta, Kenta Ma- Maeda, uh, oops, who were the others? Talking about the cast of characters, they got down to almost didn't have any characters left. Uh, gave the Dodgers two and uh, third uh, dominant endings. He also probably will uh, render him unavailable. Until at least on Sunday, McCullers uh, overcame uh, an off night uh, to record 16 out for the Astros. This is McCullers uh, Jr. there. McCullers lost command of his fastball and his curveball, which is all in walks uh, to eight and nine. Whole uh, hitter, uh, Jock Peterson. And Kiki Hernandez, uh, the lead off there. Uh, Chris Taylor, just after Hinch uh, called uh, for Peacock uh, to begin warming up McCullers, and uh, introduced a ground ball from uh, Corey Seager. And uh, let's see, Carlos Correa received it and fired back uh, first to covering McCullers. For a double play, a second uh, run scored to make it a 4-1. Uh, but the uh, double play limited the damage significantly when the career uh, reminded uh, the pitcher on his way back to the mound. Hmm. 
the best outcome here is a one run in the inning. So uh, go out there. Oh, I see. Go out there and get the guy. After uh, the Astros uh, took advantage of a throwing error by the left-hander Tony Watson uh, to attack on an insurance run in the fifth, the Dodgers uh, got a run back and uh, one more in the sixth. McCullers issued a leadoff walk to uh, Springer before sprinting uh, to a two-strike curveball that Justin Turner ripped down the third baseline for a double after McCullough struck out Corey uh, Bellinger for a third time. Hinch pulled him and, and Peacock and they say the rest was history. Uh, Brian uh, McCann uh, kept calling for fastballs and the pitcher who rarely ever uh, shakes his uh, catcher obligated to do it. McCann said of Peacock's fastball, I was... Uh, just uh, seeing uh, funny uh, swings and uh, funny takes. He's got one of the best uh, fastballs in the game. A man would have been on his way to Japan, who started with the Astros in a division series before he's replaced in rotation by McCullers in the uh, ALCS through 53 pitches to get uh, the final 11 outs. That's Mr. Peacock, and we'll try to finish this up here. Honestly, I expect what he's done this year and every year since he has been here. Uh, that's from the left hand ace, Dallas uh, Kirchhoff, a teammate since he joined, since Peacock joined the Astros in 2013. So he's been there four years. Peacock, a former uh, uh, 41st round uh, pick of the uh, Washington Nationals. They really needed him. The Nationals did, that is. Was it for years? Uh, Plagued uh, by a balky uh, back. Hmm. And anyway, when he finally extended the Astros, uh, exit, excuse me, the Astros clubhouse, that was at almost uh, 11.53, a man in the Astro uh, garb who happened to be walking by stuck out his fists uh, for a pound and said, Peacock, that was uh, bleeping a beautiful Anyway, loud chance of let's go Peacock there, uh, where his uh, parents, sister, wife, four close friends from West Palm Beach, Florida, awaited him. It's crazy, Peacock said. So Peacock is from uh, Florida. Anyway, well, the Dodgers, I, I suppose one will say uh, they will either uh, come to uh, play tonight as the Dodgers. Or they will leave the stadium there in Minute Maid Stadium dressed in clown suits. And be, as they say, one game away from uh, going down uh, five. uh, One to four, in other words. It it is a situation that can happen to you. Uh, The Dodgers have been there before. But to start a losing streak here... Uh, but I was reflecting on that, and it just shows, I suppose, how really how bad the Cubs were. Because remember, the Cubs were almost swept uh, in this. Uh, they won uh, one in Wrigley Field, lost one in Wrigley Field, went to Houston, and never got back. Literally. So, in other words, that was it. Uh, a five-game uh, series. Could it happen here? Yes, it could. Uh the Dodgers' biggest problem was the errors, uh, obviously, uh, is a big problem. But their bullpen. Darvish evidently uh, couldn't get it going uh, there. And their relievers, uh, you remember, down four runs. So the relievers did pretty much did their job. Uh, Houston got one more run after that off of the relief core. And they sort of got back in it. That is the L.A. Dodgers. They got uh, free runs there. But still you have a 5-3 to three, uh, game. And Mr. Giles is not there. So what that means is uh, Houston has uh, many weapons in their bullpen. They're bringing Peacock out there and resting their uh, closing. Now the Dodgers in um, the uh, League Championship Series and in the series uh, with the Astros had to rely on Kimberly Jansen. And... This time in the season, 
arms are uh, are tired, no doubt about it. So that situation we have uh, out there. And also looking at the two teams in terms of their composition. There are very few African Americans on either one of those teams. And that does make a difference in terms of speed, in terms of strength, and some other things uh, there. Especially uh, speed. Now, Tuve has speed. Now, there are some people there. And, and uh, who is it? Uh, Corey, what's his name on the Dodgers has speed. But it's not the same competition uh, composition of the of teams. So if you look at back at Major League Baseball, you're talking about Major League Baseball be, basically being where it was uh, now in the early 60s. Because when you had uh, Mickey Mantle and those people around in their heyday, uh, when old Casey Stinger was winning uh, seven uh, World Series, that was during the apartheid era, it was a different game. And as African-American players came into the game, at that time, he did not have as many Latino uh, players there. He had Clemente and, and several others. But then the infusion there, things uh, drastically changed in uh, in the late 60s, in the 70s. And then it started in the 80s, the mid-80s to the 90s, where you were getting more and more uh, players out of uh, colleges. Now, that brought about a different type of player. And then you had the other Dominicans naturally uh, still coming in, some coming out of Cuba, some out of Venezuela. But a basic, and, and a few, not very many out of Mexico, if you know Venezuela was one of the latter ones that was in the 80s. So the whole complexion of baseball has changed. Someone asked me uh, well, not too long ago about, well, you don't see the protests in a baseball. You did see protests in baseball in uh, the 70s where people did not... Uh, Salute uh, for the, uh, put their hand over their heart, for the uh, national anthem. So you did have that. But now you don't have as many because you honestly do not have as many African Americans in uh, baseball. So baseball has become a sport. Uh, fortunately, in Boston, the Henry, the Henry family has tried to promote African Americans going uh, to the games. And the Red Sox, one of the last teams to. Uh, incorporate African Americans in. The Yankees stand out there also. So that is the old days of baseball. You did not have the Darvishes there. Baseball, an imperialistic game, very, very popular in Japan, in Korea, more in Asia playing baseball. So that is why you have uh, the Darvish uh, there. And that fool... uh, forget what his name was now, but anyway, uh, making uh, signs that he's an idiot. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> and the Spanish word, uh, uh, catito? Uh, catito? Anyway, the, the the situation is there. That's Chinese. And you had the wrong, literally, group. But that kind of ignorance uh, obviously fell uh, flat on its uh, face, uh, period, there, because of the number of uh, people... And that was where uh, Mr. Peacock was going to play baseball in Japan. There are a lot of players there in uh, Japan, and they come from Japan here, and a lot of players uh, there and and, uh, for the Korea. But there is a big competition with sports. And, I mean, back to our day, one of the parallel sports with baseball is, of course, basketball, some of the same skills. So baseball is lucky to get uh, Mr. Judge because he's, what, 6'7", 6'8", whatever, uh, could have been in basketball. So I mean, he's in uh, baseball. So in other words, the competition you have there and basketball plays a similar 160 or so uh, games. And then, of course, you have football. So in other words, all these sports are stacked up there and uh, in uh, Major League uh, or in the National Football League, the concussions are there and the latest uh we have a new program that's really coming up called All About Sports. I don't want to get too much into this. But the Houston uh, owner, his remarks about the natives are, uh, have to be, uh, as they say, maintained. Uh, but, you know, he's running a slavery system, so at least he admitted to it. Uh, but those things have come out there. And coupled with DJ Trump, 
Uncle Carl can uh, smooth it over any way he wants. But what has happened here is, and is you look at D.J. Trump dialectically, uh, D.J. Trump's got all these schemes going. But you also have counter moves. But it's, it allowed the racism in the NFL to be exposed on the part of the owners. That is out here. And it's also bringing out here many things that would have been a passed by, such as uh, the uh, various uh, machinations in Hollywood uh, with the uh, with the uh, with the sexual uh, capers there. Those that brought out it went from uh, Bill Cosby on a race situation to uh, Harvey uh, Weinstein. So, in other words, and more coming out. Even poor old Daddy Bush. And he's in his 93 years old in his wheelchair. But anyway, these things are uh, coming out every day. So the White House announces that uh, D.J. Trump is immune to women are lies. Well, again, that is a, that is a, uh, a flippable a spin there. But how many people actually believe that? So what the Republicans are doing now, they have their tax plan. We didn't mention that, unfortunately. This is our extended version here so we can go over. But the whole idea of this tax blue blueprint coming, I almost said blooper, coming out there uh, in uh, the Washington Post, there was a, uh, an article um, by who was it? Anyway, she was talking about a not needed uh, tax cut. Well, the situation is marginal tax rates now are much lower than they've ever been. When Reagan uh, went in, they were, I think up to 70% uh, the rate, and now the rate is down to 39 This is on uh, individual uh, earners, and they want to put the corporate rate down uh, to uh, 20%. Uh, percent. But the problem is that it doesn't matter very much where the corporate rate is because there are so many exclusions there. And when you start talking about a $1.5 trillion budget deficit there, then you go to things like 401Ks. You cut those out. You have to temper with things. And what people have to look at this is is a delivery uh, to Wall Street and the banks. That is what this tax scheme is all about. They make the delivery. And then you go down as the old line political consultants, one and I am, uh, you used to look at the checklist, and you look at the checklist there, eh, well, of uh, not so much campaign promises, but what had been accomplished. Well, they didn't repeal Obamacare, but they had been able to, as uh, Boehner was able to do, and uh, old man uh, McConnell, is to uh, frustrate things, uh, to block things. Uh, so you do that by cutting the uh, advertisement uh, period uh, down by cutting funds down by 90%. Those are things, uh, temporary measures you can use to frustrate it. So you buy yourself a few months, a few years, but then eventually you get a single payer. So that's your checklist. You get your tax reform there, but you get a deficit. And that's based upon this pie-in-the-sky scheme. But if you get enough uh, economic activity going you will be able to offset that through people paying uh, taxes. Does not happen. And that's one of the big problems. Uh, we'll talk about it on numbers, man. But one of the big problems in the economic sphere. You came out uh, with um, some better than expected uh, figures on uh, GDP, GDP. But this is the second estimate. It's not complete. Uh, you, you're running close to 3%. But the problem is, and this is when you you factor in the stock market, which is sort of up and sort of down, it goes up, goes down, and the market is up now, I think 2300 or whatever, it, it fluctuates around. But the, but the whole point is this, what goes up, especially when the market comes down, so this will be, we're talking about this more on numbers, man, but you, you see some things are going there. China is doing a much better, not as good as they've done in previous years, but better there, they what 6.8% there, we covered them. Uh, that keeps the ball going. In uh, Europe, they're doing uh, pretty good. Uh, for petroleum product, they're up around $60 a bail. Remember one time, they were almost $100 a bail. But the whole point is this, can it be sustained? No. And, and this is part of the problem with this whole scheme. And as far as individuals are concerned, individuals out of this whole 
tax cutting scheme. They'll put up the standard deduction, but a lot of other things, depending on what you do, uh, you will not gain a lot of money on this. Probably about five hundred dollars, but at the same time, you'll have you know your local taxes, etc. And for people in states that have taxes that are livable states, quote unquote, like California, New York. Their taxes are in New York City, you have a commuter's tax, etc. But the uh, standard of living there is much better than, say, in Mississippi, where you still have outdoor privies and toilets. But uh, So, in other words, if you're a low-tax state, you're a low-tax state. But the problem is when the economy goes south, as it did in uh, 2000, the end of 2007, 2008, you get into the Depression, is what happened in uh, Nevada, Las Vegas area. Those sales taxes were not generating state got in a hole. Same thing with Texas. So you had to cut back on education. So that is your future. So you're cutting back on things. So you're going to have a problem getting an Amazon plant in there. And there's a lot of uh, Amazon headquarters. There's a lot of other things going on. We went, I know, too far. But uh, we'll be looking to a game a four in Houston. And in the event the Dodgers do not come forward in Game 4, they will lose this series. Because either they will win, have to win a game to get back to L.A., but winning two games in L.A. for them with this Houston team is not going to be easy. We'll see you on the Monday morning uh, quarterback on the uh, Catalona uh, special. And we won't forget about Fats. We still have that just about completed. And hopefully we'll get the open source report out. We'll be uh, talking about the uh, some about the Google uh, Chrome conference and what Google is doing uh, with Progressive Web and the incorporation uh, looking at the uh, web as a worldwide enterprise to deal with all kinds of devices because in, in many areas you do not have a fiber fast speed you have what G2, maybe even G1 on, and this is primarily a mobile or phone atmosphere. But from what we have, we saw the uh, conference, uh, the presenters there were not reflective of the world. I did not see one African there <laughs> from any of the uh, nations on the continent of the diaspora, like in the U.S. and Brazil, etc., did not see, uh, I believe, even one Latino. I may be corrected on that one. We did see some people from China there as presenters. And this is the big problem that we see as we get into more and more uh, software topologies that take into consideration the world uh, as a Google has to do because the emerging markets are where the money will be made not in the USA and in Europe. So until they get their developers' community in order, there is major, major problems for the Googles and the Facebooks. It's coming. And this is what we talked about earlier here. We won't get on it very much, but these are the side issues brought about by D.J. Trump. I remember uh, when we first ran into D.J. Trump, we had what was called a corporate campaign and Operation Push in uh, Chicago. D.J. Trump was a man that rented literally space there uh, right off of Wall. I think he was on Wall Street, I believe, on Wall. It was 1500 Anyway, whatever it was that preceded that. And the whole idea behind the Wall Street campaign was, was to pressure, conjole, boycott major corporations in to dealing with African Americans uh, primarily. And with women, so that was that was the whole situation of people of color. That was the whole situation there. So now uh, Jesse has an office, uh, Jesse Jackson and Push, out in Silicon Valley. So we're in the preliminary stages of starting that. But when you start looking at how the world uh, interacts uh, with Google, with Facebook, when you start talking about mobile, which they are talking about. Many people in, uh, quote-unquote, urban areas, inner cities, etc., in rural areas are more and more interacting with these services via mobile. I know, uh, looking at our statistics, 60, 
to almost 70% of the people are using a mobile. So we're moving from the desktop uh, to uh, the mobile apps, and no doubt about it, that means a bandwidth. And, but it also has to look at, at who is producing this. Incidentally, the women's uh, convention in Detroit will be today. We'll be uh, covering uh, that uh, also, and we'll put it up on our uh, mass. Have a good weekend, everyone. Happy Halloween, and we'll see you on the Monday morning quarterback and numbers man this weekend from WBRN Radio in Boston and on the Boston Red Network. Good day.